Our job um, is to read the um, current situation. Um, and the current situation, this is the United Kingdom, is that, um, you know, when burglars come to you, they come in, in numbers. You know, we talked about switchpipe, we talked about multiple attackers. Um, I think you can see here, you've got four people here that are waiting outside this home in London, um, waiting to, to gangbang the family. Are they ready? The UK again, you know, serious crime. This again is another gang of people um, breaking into the uh, shops and, you know, you might say, well, it's a shop and they're insured and stuff like that. But, you know, increasingly they're doing it to people's homes in gangs, you know, and um, a dog can just be the difference between life and death. That, that difference, that moment, because people want to fight back. Look at this incident here with someone fighting back. I'm sure one of our switchbike dogs would have been very effective in this uh, circumstance. At least it's for not the, a matter of if it happens. It's a matter of when it will happen to some people. You know, you've got a, a young girl, you've got three people in the home, uh, headlock. Um, you know, you've even got a female criminal here um, that is involved in this gangbanging behaviour while they unpack um, the house. You know, again, I wonder what the difference would be um, if this poor lady had some support. So sometimes people wonder, why is it that we're making dogs aggressive? Um, you want to thank your lucky stars that you, you don't understand why um, you know, because you haven't been exposed to serious crime.
Young man, have you been here before? No, first time. First time, what's your name? Jake. Jake. Guest decoy, young man trying to learn. And we're just um, going to do an exercise with a series of dogs. I keep saying about what does a finished dog, what should it look like? Certainly, there should be no need to wear a sleeves. Can you roll up your... No sleeves? Any whips on you? No. Nothing at all, you know. So, what we want to see is how the dogs will react to them um, in a more real situation. Mr. Tomas, come through. So, we have a Chinese red dog um, coming in. Walk in. So setting the agenda so you understand the purpose of this exercise. Um, the guest decoys just allow us to proof um, that the animal is not just reacting to our own residential decoy. Um, you know, the, 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 the conditioning for every time it sees that decoy, then it can understand um, that, yeah, this person means protection. So these guest decoys assist us, I believe, in re-establishing um, and proofing um, that the dogs understand what they've been trained to do. Um, so this case is actually, you know, you have foreign people uh, in your home that were not invited and you've walked in um, and we want to see naturally how the dog reacts and whether the dog is going to indicate, bark, uh, which is very important because if they are potential criminals, you know, that level of barking and indication will set a, uh, an agenda. Face the gentleman. And he's just indicating. Nine. Nine. But now. Lazarus. Pass off. Bravo. Bravo. So the next thing that we've seen is good lad. Nine. Okay. No sleeves. Okay. So, Jake, you're going to now stand up. Let's see if he's going to back down. Good. So we see the defense. Good. You know, the rhetoric that, um, you know, people just say, oh, if someone's in my house, I want the dogs just to go and bite. We don't, we don't work under that um, protocol um, because many of our clients, their house is very porous. They've got all sorts of uh, people coming, uh, delivering flowers, nannies and chefs and workmen. However, the dog still needs to be able to bark. Um, and then we decide, the homeowner, whether this is friend or, or foe. So that is that is part of this exercise. Um, there is a, a point in obedience training that you fade food. Now, in personal protection training, um, in particular, I am very sure that it's important to also fade the need for equipment stimulation. Because, you know, these uh, home invaders and criminals don't come with these stimuluses. So therefore the animal must not only work under this criteria. Mr. Tomas, come in. So, the dog comes in. And this is not an animal that just is wild. Um, you know, sees the <laughs> sees the strangers. So, what is the purpose of this? This exercise here is trying to mimic a situation where a dog walks back into your home and sees total strangers. Does that dog understand instantly that that dog needs to bark um, to first of all let you know and also to intimidate them until you say, oh. This is a plumber or a friend. And walk back past and face the guys. Walk forward. Watch her leap. There was no need to jump up. I don't think you can be any more passive than you. Mr. Tomas? So this dog is a little bit young. It's going to be quite interesting. Um how he, how he, uh, this is stable. 
Good lad. Nice young dog. So, Mr. Tomas, you need to make sure you're holding this dog properly. Yeah. Okay. So he's. So, he says he doesn't like this. So again, what we're just trying to see here is the dog's understanding of the importance of um, just barking. You know, the, these are strangers uh, in the home. Um, and, you know, does the homeowner know? Is the homeowner happy? Um, and, you know, if they were criminals, he's setting the agenda that, listen, you know, there is going to be a big problem now. And I believe that once that happens in a home where there are potential burglars, um, they will be looking to get out of that environment sooner rather than later. So it's a very clear vocal uh, communication that, listen, um, you're not welcome at this time. And um, as the two criminals stand up uh, to the dog, the dog's autonomous skill set is to escalate the level of aggression again to try and create fear um, to mitigate any future uh, concerns. Both of you come together. Both of you come, for come forward, watch your line. Watch your line, yeah. Mr. Tomas? Yeah. So this is a 13 month old shepherd in our breeding program. We still breed for, for um, size. Good lad. Good boy. Right. So he's setting the agenda. <laughs> Beautiful. Bravo. Good. And this is what's really important with a dog. That bark. Many of you see dogs that don't want to bark. They want to just bark. Now, both of you stand up. Let's see a challenge from both of you. Give him, a, give him a chance to recover. Good. Good lad. Good. 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 So there is a another response that, oh, well, you know, this dog is just reacted. All they were doing was sitting in the house. Um, why was he showing aggression? It wasn't that they were sitting in the house. They were sitting in the house when they had no invitation to be in the house. So these are clandestine foreign bodies. And this is the fine line between a pet and a protection dog. Um, you know, you've got to be more careful on when you ask strangers uh, to come to the home because their job is to indicate and let you know when they do not recognize this familiar odor or uh, physical profile. Lads, leave. So Ramsey's never seen any these guys before. Um, and uh, they're gonna come in in a minute. And um, he has to indicate they're total strangers. Or does he? So if they walk in, I wanna keep him cool. So guys, walk in normally, bleed. Walk in normally, guys. 
But the control later on in life is critical force. Flat, instant respect. So some of the previous stuff that we saw the indication, that's fine. But what about controlling the animal? Because these are delivering a, a mattress from uh, um, you know, dreams, beds, and they're gonna assemble it. They're innocent people. This is what we thought, okay? Blacks, bleed, fools. Blacks. Now, when we move down here as well, walk towards them now. Bleed. Then, man, start to just read the words a little bit. What are you talking about? Pass off. We're now going to escalate you a little bit, okay? You're going to really start to raise your voice now. Before I start. Hey! Move! 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 So there's a, another response that could occur where they're um, oh well, anytime um, strangers come into the house and pick up a tool to repair something, the dog is going to um, kick off and try to attack them. <laughs> there's a balance. Remember, you know, we gave the dog a command to bark at these people um, because they were turning aggressive, which often happens. Um, you know, with builders and, you know, repairmen just trying their luck. But you have to remember, you can't have it all. You know, when you've got strangers and repairmen coming, put your dog away. Put it in reach, but put it away. So that they don't get hurt unnecessarily. are going to walk around you're going to start to close in walk around and then you're going to just attack okay yeah bleep believe it is absolutely true that you can get great control, great handler respect, and yet a timely and effective autonomous protection. Sit, flat, sit, flat, sit, flat. 
I'm sure there's a group of people that will argue, well, the dog should never have left the handler's side and he should have been with the handler and not gone to fight. Well, <laughs> the personal protection clients are not handlers. They are all civilians, everyday people that um, can't fight back, won't fight back and shouldn't fight back. So we need to make sure that we get these animals to be as incredibly combative Everything has an Achilles heel. You know, whether he can fight 10 men, eight men, one man, you know, someone could shoot him, someone could poison him, someone could do X, Y, and Z, but we're just trying to give him an advantage. That's it. He's just absolutely perfected his training here. Watch the redirection onto the wrist. Um, if a Labrador bit you on the wrist like this, um, you would know about it, let alone this dog. He stopped this criminal absolutely. Okay. And then go to swap. There we go. Right? No, he won't bite. No, don't, don't, don't do that. Do. This is uh, Scotty, the same dog that you're watching uh, in the three man switch bite. Um, and I'm just trying to show here um, because it's very easy for people to try and misrepresent pure facts. Um, the, 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 the viciousness and the intent uh, of this dog that when a bite, those individual bites that are on bare flesh, they are life-changing bites. Absolutely life-changing bites. And then now I'm going to also show you 
when we tell the dog to stay in to take a beating? Is he capable to do that? Right, Mr. Tomas, drop the line. So now we have this hammer. Now watch your hand, okay? So the other dog got hammered, yeah? Hammer this dog, watch your hand. Hammer this dog, prepare yourself, yeah? So on the typical social media rhetoric, this dog is now deemed a ninja and, and, and he's hard. He's not hard, he's dead. Asking him to stay in like this is not good for him, not good for the homeowner, not good for the situation. So, you know, if we want him to stay in, he can stay in. But when you've got multiple attackers or well-armed attackers, the switch bite becomes a lifesaver for both the dog and the homeowner. This is basic common sense. Again, why? Why would this be advantageous? Um, there is no loss in the commitment to the bite. There is no loss in the commitment from an assault. But through his education, um, as we continue to advance his education, being beaten up is not the way. He must, um, you know, when the pressure is becoming deadly serious, um, re-engage and again, deliver a bite that could potentially save his life and his owner's life. Here, I start to call him out of this fight, okay? And he must listen. So I'm calling him out here and I'm redirecting him to me um, for basically for him to come back um, and he's given me enough distance. So after calling him back, I can now redirect him in different ways. Let's watch that. So, the rhetoric of this committed bite um, without any spatial awareness in the personal protection market, a market that was, uh, you know, stimulated by vulnerable people that can't defend themselves, that won't defend themselves and that shouldn't defend themselves. The ability of the animal to, 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 to uh, disable as many assailants as possible is so important. It is only the bite suit that allows these young men to continue the fight. If you imagine that there was a, you were in a group of criminals and a dog was delivering bites like this, you wouldn't keep coming forward. You know, criminals don't have moral compasses. They would have abandoned their uh, colleagues, um, you know, hopefully. And if they don't abandon their colleagues and they're determined, um, we can continue to deliver bites onto each member. Um, at the very least, we have DNA of the incident. Um, but more probable, we have incredible injuries that uh, disabled them from further activities. True facts. On raw flesh, true facts. Can Hydroxy Gag, um, you know, a product that uh, is made in Germany, the finest of German engineering, um, for, you know, working dogs, young dogs. Um, it's a great product um, supporting the joints and the ligaments uh, of our beloved canines. Then we have the uh, Complete Excellent um, by Duck, a Belgian company. This is a raw food. What I love most about this food is that the genuine ingredients, but also they come in um, patties like this, so you can choose the quantity easily for a daily feeding. Belcando for all life stages, the puppy gravy, uh, and you know the Iberico pork and rice. Um, they have a fantastic range. Again, fantastic German engineering. Or you might be interested in cold press. Um, so we have all of this uh, available um, to support your canine. Our client is always the canine. Please uh, speak to our team at visitpoochdvd.com. Our website, uh, Visit Pooch DVD on Facebook. Uh, we're here to support you. Thank you for your support.